What's going on, YouTube? This is Necrostevo, and you're watching my Friday narrated Pokemon Wi-Fi battle video. Today's match is a wonderful match that I had against Random Man 784 yet another one of my wonderful rivals that I had met on Twitter. So be sure to go check out his description. I will leave his link in the description. Check out his channel. Check out his channel description. There we go. In the description of this video. I don't know. There's got to be some way to make that work where I don't screw it up. We're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on the fact that I start out with this Lapras that Toshiro traded me. And I decided to go with a spec set because it is a modest Lapras. Um, I knew if I started off with it in this match looking at what he had in the beginning, I could hit something hard or make an easy prediction and switch out of uh, a physical move. And Lapras is bulky enough that it can take hits and then throw some specs damage around. So fortunately, he just goes for the T-Wave and I don't get paralyzed, so I'm able to take out Quillfish with a specs Thunderbolt. Now I could have gone for yet another Specs Thunderbolt on a Selgor, but those things are notorious for carrying a Sash. And I have a special wall, no real reason to stay in there. Um, and I'm not that bothered by the Paralysis because my Altaria, named after my friend Grace here, has Heal Bell. Uh, so I, I really wasn't that worried about it. I'm going to go for Heal Bell just to get it off of Lapras, um, get the status effect off of Lapras rather because it still can serve a good purpose in this battle. And Lapras is relatively slow, but there are a couple Pokemon on his team that I will probably outspeed if I'm not paralyzed. So He goes for Thunderbolt and gets the Paralysis, which I was like, oh, he got that, but I couldn't get my 30% Paralysis from the Dragon Breath. Hmm, this is suspect. Um, I did not like the amount of damage he was doing with his Thunderbolts, because I, I can only take one more, and I really needed to roost off the damage, but I got paralyzed before I could roost. So he's going to get a chance to go for one more, and it's like, uh, okay, good. No paralysis that turn. That means I get to go back to half HP. Let's try getting rid of this paralysis one more time. That only had a 10% chance of occurring in the first place. But, you know, you play that game when you play Pokemon, and sometimes hacks happen. Fortunately for me, it hasn't made too big of a deal here. And I'm kind of tired at looking at his Rotom, and I needed to force him out. I couldn't really switch anything in on a Thunderbolt or a Leaf Storm if he decided to randomly switch it up. And so instead of going for a Roost again, I wanted to put him in a situation where he would be forced to switch out or roll switch or something. And now, knowing that he's probably going to go for Thunderbolt again, we're going to go out into Kazam and change into him so that I can resist, rather quad resist, Thunderbolt. Even though he manages to get a crit that turn, I'm really happy I switched out because a crit probably would have taken out my Altaria. And now that I know he's going to switch out because of the um, Paris Song, now's a great time to go for Volt Switch. I can get some switching initiative. Now I know the set that he has on his Rotom. And it was very likely that he's running a Scarf Rotom. He wasn't, it didn't seem like he was doing enough damage with the, um, uh, the Thunderbolts there to be specs. And he's going to set up his rocks. I'm actually just going to set up my rocks. We do the, it's, this is the first time in a while where we just didn't both lead off and exchange rocks immediately. That just seems to be a complimentary greeting that Pokemon trainers have, where they're like, here's some rocks for you. May they, um, sharply impale your Pokemon as they enter the field, and thank you for my rocks as well. Now we can proceed with the battle. Now I did want to force him to set up his rocks again, so I decided to go for Rapid Spin. Um, I figured, based on the damage from that last Earthquake, I could take his hits relatively well. It is unfortunate that he has rough skin, because uh, that, you know, while it also punishes me for going for Rapid Spin, that means he's probably a more bulky build, and that means I will be wasting my time trying to damage him with physical attacks. Uh, or special attacks, really. Dredigan is pretty darn bulky. Uh, so I'm just going to poison him to whittle away his HP. And I know he's probably just going to go for Earthquake, so I get a chance to bring in my Altaria again. Going to go for Roost. Just be I know he's going to bring in Cryogonal, but my only attacking move is Dragon Breath anyway. Which Cryogonal has fantastic special defense. So that would not have done very much damage to Dredigan. And it could, it could not paralyze the Dredigan. And it wouldn't do much damage to Cryogonal. Whereas now I can get almost back up to maximum health, and then just switch out as he likely rapid spins again or something like that. So that's not too bad of a, a trade-off there. I really can't do anything about him rapid spinning at this point. I don't have any ghosts on my team. 
uh, and nor do I have a rough skin or rocky helmet user to punish him for going for the rapid spin. So knowing that he's going to do that, I decided to go out into Arbok, and this is... I think my premiere showing of this Arbok, I bred it, I think, a year ago, and I've just never had a really good battle with it. But this is Two-Face the Arbok, and he has a Coil, Gunk Shot, Sucker Punch, um, I think, Earthquake set. I believe those are the moves that I have on him. And we get a chance to see him do quite a little bit of work right here. So, first of all, a plus one Sucker Punch is going to easily take out a Selgor. The thing is much too frail to take an adamant life orb sucker punch. And then here, I know specifically from the speed EVs that I run on my adamant Arbok that I will be able to take out um, Dredigan if I hit it with a gunshot. And I know that I'll outspeed because of my speed investment. So that is a Dredigan down. Now he decides to go out into Beep Beep, the Buffalon here, which just from from knowing what most people run on Buffalon. If he had a Jolly Buffalon, I think he may have been able to outspeed me. But we see right there that he's not Jolly, and he's not Scarfed. So I take that out as well. And he goes finally back out into Rotom, Choice Scarf Rotom. And I think here's where I confirmed that it was Choice Scarfed. Uh, earlier I was like, okay, I know it's Choice in some way. I really should have just Sucker Punched there. But at the same point, taking out three Pokemon in a row there, Two-Face just put in some major work. I have a lot of momentum on my side of the field. Due to Altaria's natural cure, when I switched it out earlier, I got rid of the paralysis. Here he thunderbolts and gets another paralysis. I have no idea how he's doing that. He's gotten two 10% paralyses, and I haven't gotten one from the 30% paralysis chance of Dragon Breath. But uh, once again, we're just going to go for Paris Song, because I don't, I don't really want to play the stalling shenanigans. I want to force him to switch out. I could, of course, bring in Kazam to resist his attacks yet again. He can't really do anything about it, though, at this point. Uh, I did still need to be wary because if he did happen to be, um, uh, since he was Choice Scarf, I knew I also didn't have anything that could outspeed him at this point. Because the best thing my Rotom, or I'm sorry, my Kazam the Ditto can do is transform into him and their speed tied because of course transform doesn't take into account held item boost. Uh, knowing that he's probably just going to switch out again because he doesn't want to be locked into Thunderbolt against something that quad resisted, I'm just going to go for Volt Switch one more time. and. Figuring that I can outspeed a defensive Cryogonal with my Dodrio, I'm just going to go for a Brave Bird, and I actually do outspeed, which is great, because Cryogonal actually has a higher base speed than Dodrio, I believe, but uh, if it's not invested, it will not outspeed. And this is an odd Dodrio set. It has Mirror Move, Brave Bird, Thrash, and I think um, Return, and it has Tangled Feet. And of course, Tangled Feet will boost your evasion rate when you are confused. So if I stay in long enough to get confused with uh, Thrash there, then I have a chance of at least dodging some hits, if not my Dodrio smacking their own heads together in their confusion. But uh, knowing that he outspeeds me with a Choice Scarf there, I think he was just trying to get rid of his Scarf so he could at least switch up moves, but that's fine with me. Because I get to bring in my Ditto, transform into him, and he gets to keep his scarf. And he said he wanted his scarf back, so he just went for a trick again. Because he knew the battle was over. But who can blame him? His choice scarf was more stylish than mine. You know, I, I was trying to break out the fall colors a little bit too early when we had this match. And he had a very late, those late summer colors. So I hope you guys enjoyed that match. It was actually, I think I had uh, three Pokemon left at the end of that. So not a bad match at all. A very good match. Got to use some unconventional things. Always a pleasure, Random Man 784 Now, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, make sure you guys are listening to Striaton Radio. It's a podcast that I'm on quite frequently, specifically, normally I'm on there to talk about uh, the Battle Subway segment, which is more competitive battling. But um, we, we rate teams. I, I, I give my thoughts as such as far as the, the battling climate. Most recently I was on there and I gave a wrap-up of PokeCon, and I think we have another episode coming out in a little bit where we um, we did a wrap-up of the Mega Evolutions, our opinions on them, and we also live-casted live excuse me, the Pokemon World Championship. So make sure you guys are listening to that. I'll leave a link in the description where you guys can go and download the podcast. Of course, it's free, and you can listen to it on your iTunes devices, or you can even listen to it on... Uh, Stitcher and all those wonderful things. So make sure you guys go check it out. And if you enjoy it, make sure you toss them a uh, a review or a like on their Facebook page. Or feel free to follow the Stryton Radio on Twitter as well. All this social media 
we must stay connected. You know, everything returns to the planet. That is what we learned in Final Fantasy VII, and that lesson remains true today. Um, other than that, I will have to talk to you guys later. Make sure you guys look out for me. After next weekend, I'm going to be trolling for battles almost all the time, because I have uh, my musical actually opens next Friday. And then, of course, I have a bunch of rehearsals in between now and then. So after that, I will make another battle video announcing that I'm looking for battles. I'm probably going to be able to live stream some as well. So uh, once I'm finished with this musical here and the school year starts up and I'm substitute teaching again, I should have a little bit more free time. But in the meantime, you guys have a great weekend. Thank you guys for watching my content. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you all later. Bye now.